At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? <laughs> I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were settlement fell on them. Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and I still find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 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 In today's gospel, Jesus asks the question when bad, basically, he's asking the question when bad things happen to people, is it because they deserve it? Is it because they have been particularly evil and bad? And Jesus very clearly has an answer. And that answer is no. Bad things befall people not because of their desert, but simply because there are bad things in this world. And there are people who sin. But those who suffer are not necessarily the same as those who sin. During our readings and in the hymn that we sang, one of the phrases that keeps running through them this week is, be not afraid. Most of us, most of the time, don't feel particularly afraid. We're not aware of our fear. We may be angry. We may be judgmental of others, what's wrong with them, uh, kind of like the people in the gospel. And we fail to recognize that most of our prejudices, most of our judgmentalism comes out of fear, out of in our inner being, we are afraid. And in our fear, therefore, we lash out or we seek to proclaim ourselves better than others, more deserving than others. What God asks us to do is simply recognize that we're afraid, that we are unsure rather than that we are certain, that we lack clarity in what to do in so many situations. And the message of Jesus is, relax, rest, be assured, I am with you. I am traveling with you, I'm walking this way with you. And therefore, you do not need to be afraid. And for us as Christians, he adds, because you know the end of the story. And the end of the story is Easter, it is resurrection, it is new life, it is eternal life. It is life we live with God. And as Christians, we are asked to recognize 
when we're dealing with our own fear and to turn that fear over to the one who can take care of it. God, as we know him through Jesus Christ. In our college, we say, Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Think about that. How often do we think, if I just try harder, if I just do this a little more perfect, if I just persevere, all will be right. I will make it work. Forget it. But we have one to depend on. And that one does not expect perfection of us. That one does not per expect that all will be perfect in, the, in what we are doing. Jesus expects that we will be faithful, that we will walk daily with Jesus. In today's Old Testament reading, we have the story of Moses. What we don't realize, because we're picking it up kind of in the middle of the story, is there's a reason Moses was kind of out in the wilderness. Anyone know why he was out in the wilderness there, running around, instead of working? It's because he had come to realize that he was an Israelite. He had been in the Pharaoh's court and been kind of courted as the Pharaoh's special person. And he has come to realize that in reality, his people are the Israelites who are the slaves that are working and being worked to death. And in a rage, Moses has lashed out and killed one of the Pharaoh's men. And so he is fled. And in that flee, he meets God. And that is why he feels so unworthy and is so thrown back. He knows he has done wrong. And yet here is God saying, in spite of that, I am called you. So often you and I think of the list of the things that make it so we are not worthy, whether it's worthy to read in church, whether it's worthy to demand that people treat us decently, whether it's worthy to have something special happen. And we forget nothing is about worthiness. The gospel is about God's grace, about God's love. God does not say, I will love you when you've reached perfection. God says, I will love you in the midst of your messiness, in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your wrongdoing. But God does expect from us. And it is all too common in this day and age that Christians rely on what is sometimes called cheap grace. That, well, God loves me, therefore it doesn't really matter what I do. I'll come to church, I'll say a few words to God, I'll nod my head, and then all will be right, and I can live my life as I want. That's called cheap grace. The grace that God wants us to understand is that in the midst of our sinfulness, in the midst of our wrongdoing, God is present. And God loves us. And God expects us to respond to that love and to bear fruit, to change and modify our ways so that we become God's people reaching out. In the story of the fig tree, the fig tree has failed to bear fruit. It has been relying on, some would say, cheap grace. Yeah, it's planted in good soil, it's sitting there, it's getting enough rain, it's getting enough sun. Yeah, it's just kind of basking there, it's this good life. But then the heaven, the owner comes and says, you're not bearing any fruit. And he says to the gardener, cut this down so that we can put something that will be productive. And some would present that the gardener is kind of Jesus. And and the gardener says, let me dig around its roots. Let me throw some manure on it. Let me mess up the soil and see if I can't get it to bear fruit. That's what happens to you and me all too often in our life. We want that easy grace where we can do what we want. 
and God will forgive and accept us. But there are times in our lives, in all of our lives, when it is necessary for a little manure to be put in our life and for the foundation of our world to be shaken up and mixed up a little, not because we fail to do anything, but because that will get us to pay attention to what we're really supposed to be doing, the fruit that we're really supposed to be bearing in this world, the fruit of love, the fruit of hope, the fruit of forgiveness. And so on this third Sunday of Lent, we hear over and over that refrain, be not afraid, right beside the imagery that the worst that we can do, I mean, most of you can't get much worse than murdering somebody. And yet, Moses becomes God's means of freeing the Israelites from slavery. We too often are the fig tree that's failing to bear, bear fruit. But God mixes up the soil around our roots. God puts a little manure in those around those roots. And God invites us to bear fruit. And so during this Lent, may we ponder what is the digging in our roots that we need to be doing? What is the things that we need to be tending to that we tend to forget? Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer.